today because we are talking to the chef in charge of the Raiders food at the practice facility. Ooh. So exciting. We're first ever. Mary Lamort. Yeah, first ever NFL team. So exciting. And because of that, we are talking for pandemic provisions. Yay. We are talking about game day food. Game and day Louis, food. I'm going to start because my game day food is nachos, or as my cooks used to call it, nachitos. 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 <laughs> uh, they were invented in the 1940s in Piedras Negras, Mexico. Um, it's just four miles from the Texas border. So the cook that invented it, he was actually inventing it for Americans that were coming across the border to have Mexican food because the food was better four miles away. <laughs> So they would go across the border, you know, anytime, day or night, and get some really badass Mexican food from Texas. And they were like, make me a snack. I want something like a late night snack. It's kind of like melty, cheesy. And so he decided to cut up tortillas into triangles, fry them up, put cheese on it, melt it, and put some jalapenos on it. And that was the original nachitos with just those things in it. Later on, as it got popular, he added the refried beans and the guacamole. His name was Ignacio Anaya. And in the Mexican culture, Ignacio, the nickname is Nacho. And then one more quick fact, because we're talking about football today. They actually got famous nationwide outside of Texas and Mexico in 1978 at a Dallas Cowboys Monday night football game because a very, very popular announcer, Howard Cosell, had eaten the nachos at the stadium there and he thought they were so good he turned nacho into a word that meant great. So he'd say like, that was a nacho play or nacho oh. run or what a nacho pass. And so that's how they gave me <laughs> Mine's like the chicken wing. I'm just going to delve into some facts here about the chicken wing. So Americans ate an estimated record-breaking 1.4 billion chicken wings during the Super Bowl weekend. So 1.4 billion wings, to add them up, if they were laid end-to-end, -end, they would stretch the entire Florida coastline more than nine times. So one point four deaths. That's a lot. <laughs> one point four billion wings could circle the circumference of the Earth three times. That's a lot of wings. All right, moving on from game day food to the complex in Henderson, the Los Angeles Raiders' first ever performance Closive. and nutrition culinary center. We are getting inside right now. Louis, today we are chatting with the chef in charge of the hospitality team at the Culinary Center at the new Henderson Practice Facility in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Raiders Silver and Black Training Center. Super exciting for us, Louis. Hey, Gary, how are you? I'm doing amazing. Thanks for having me, guys. <clears throat> we see your backdrop. Very cool. Yeah. So is that actually your view from the kitchen? Or your uh, office? Well, it's definitely the view from the kitchen. So I'm sitting wow. in the area right now. You guys want okay. to Okay. Yeah, please. This is an indoor uh, practice field. It's about one and a half football fields. There's three more outside. Uh, oh. There's a dining area. Wow. wow. And then behind me, uh, you can see our kitchen. So we've got uh, pizza ovens. Yes. Uh, smokers, 
Oh, yeah. I'm getting chills, Louis. <laughs> right, yeah. first ever uh, chess playground. <laughs> indoor gardens. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. What you got growing in there right now? Right now, pea shoots. Okay, cool. Yeah, high in uh, vegetable protein, and yeah. yeah, we put them in smoothies and salads and stuff like that. So you have a smoothie wow. bar somewhere there. Cool. We do. The um, we do uh couple different types a day, uh, kind of geared at um, weight loss or weight gain or uh -huh. uh, just general like functional nutrition based upon what the individual player or coach uh, or executive is looking to do with their life. Wow. Okay, that okay. is so cool. That's so, you crazy. know, I got like a ton of questions. Lauren probably has like a ton Yeah, of like now we have a million. Okay, so, um, I'm seeing the format as kind of like a, a cafeteria type or like a but high end. type yeah but super high end. so i mean how does this work is it like super tailored to the person does he have like a scan card and stuff like that that gives you data about him so you know what to give him okay great question so there is um we work hand in hand with a team of nutritionists uh-huh uh and they work they're kind of our like conduit from information, but they also work with all the strength and conditioning coaches and the doctors and things like that. And the nutritionist is really the like sports equivalent of like a food and beverage director. Okay. So oh, like, okay. In our, in our world, um, they're kind of assembling the different data and needs and consumer and guest information and helping put it together. Um, so <clears throat> um, what we do is then we take that goal uh, for that individual and we help them uh, manifest the nutritional needs uh, using delicious whole foods uh, instead of supplements and um, uh, in a manner that also is conducive to return visits by the players. So wow. the interesting thing is um, you know they have this whole facility but the players don't have to eat here. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, we're doing two really unique things here, which is one, um, you know, they're really investing in super talented chefs uh, to ensure that the engagement level with the players is really high. That's actually goal number one. Goal number two is then serving their individual uh, nutrition needs, but not just through <clears throat> like a like a caloric um, or like macro lens but from a like a holistic nutrition uh standpoint so um they're very much interested in ensuring that we're using you know organic product and the you know they want to drive out with me to like farms and meet the people and uh you know not just engage with the community at a really high level but also ensure that um you know what they're giving the players and the executives because it is really about the whole team not just the players right. um, that we're providing like best possible like nutrition available. Yeah, we really so love cool. that name, Performance and Nutrition Culinary mm -hmm. Center. Like those words, performance and nutrition. We love seeing those words together because on Two Sharp Chefs, Louie and I constantly talk about how food is medicine, how food really just, even if you're not a pro athlete, it affects your performance in everyday life. Clearly this team and your team see this as a priority. Yeah, the um, and I think that the uh, it's the conversation that so honest hospitality team we're um, like a group of you know food service professionals, but we're full spectrum front of the house, back of the house, beverage, like accounting, HR, you ha you name it. We started out as very culinary focused um, uh, because that was you know where our backgrounds were, but <clears throat> now we find ourselves talking about that crossroads of uh, cuisine and um, uh, and nutrition in almost every single project we do. We're building a, you know, uh, resorts and um, uh, like culinary education centers, and that's honestly it is the most interesting conversation around food right now. People have kind of like shot past celebrity chefs and all that stuff, and they want to yeah. know like how does this apply to me? Like how can I use this? You know, like, is this achievable? Um, 
And I think as consumer education increases, we're just going to see more of it. No. That is true. I really want to ask you just about the holy moly of this. I mean, I know I've, I've heard that you're not a huge like sports ball fan or anything. I am, <laughs> but I know I'm you're not. not. I'm, <laughs> sure I'm not either. either but um, we're on the same but place. like, you obviously see like how crazy this is because like my husband works in sports and you know, and, and I'm a Niner fan and I still think this is crazy cool because even though they're Raiders, it's a cool thing for me. Like it's taken decades to get this team here. And now you get to be a part of this and your team gets to be a part of something that's like truly iconic for Las Vegas. I've always been pretty focused on career and um, not from like a, a growth of other people, but in my own like personal challenges. And that's really like who I'm competing against is, you know, am I better than I was yesterday? It's been a very strange path and uh, it's been wonderful. And I've gotten to travel all over and meet all these amazing people. Um, the best part of this for me, the is it's honestly, it's not like getting to like meet players and stuff like that. I, they're normal people. Right. And, uh, most of them are really cool and totally down to earth. Uh, I, there are like a lot of fancy cars in the parking lot and um, a lot of like big salaries and stuff like that. But honestly in here, it is very much a family and nobody's up on a pedestal. And it's literally like, I'm trying to help people have like a really good lunch, you know? Yeah. Uh, so as it's really as simple as that. Uh, we do do three meals a day. So we spend a lot of time with these guys. Um, there's a lot of interaction. All our employees are like on a first name basis with them. The, um, they're very interested in knowing about us and, um, and they're really excited about the food. The holy moly part uh, for me, I think is just potentially understanding how much we may actually change the field of sports. Yes. Team. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of uh, sports teams that have, like right now we have like five, five star chefs working in this environment. It's not one, it's not two, it's not me. Very there's cool. a team of incredibly qualified, amazing people. Um, they're all local Las Vegas chefs. Um, and, you know, each one of them brought a person or two to the team with them my holy moly moments when I show up to work every day and realize that like I get to work with these guys every day. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. It's amazing. Yeah. So besides healthy, um, I'm guessing that there are other special requests because I know that there are pro athletes that are vegan now, like maybe plant-based or gluten-free, or maybe someone needs something low sugar. Um, is that, something that you're doing there and kind of keeping in mind as you're making stuff or does it just depend on every single player? How does that work? Well, we, um, we change the entire menu every two days okay. and, uh, and it's three meals a day. So we're always making new food and we always have to run those menu items through, through, through a few different filters. So, there's food that we're producing for a majority of the players. And then there's some specialty uh, menu items and meal prep and stuff like that that we're doing for certain uh, elements of the team that have different goals. Uh, like there are elements of the team that want to lose weight. You know, when the rookies come on, they'd like to, they want those guys to gain weight right. because they're, they're moving into a whole different league of, uh, you know, just literally mass and size of the guys they're out on the field with. So it's a safety thing. Um, we've been uh, very lucky and successful so far with achieving the actual goals. Cause the interesting thing here is we're not just saying like, oh, you know, we want guys to like change their, you know, uh, body mass makeup and stuff like that. Everything we do, these guys are tested and there's metrics for everything. So when we, like have like, um, they'll call it like a red flag player where the goals are intense and it's strategic and they're measured every single day. So we know, you know, if we put X player on a program, you know, three or four days later, we're getting feedback like they've lost three pounds. This is amazing. We're happy or, uh, uh, or not. Yeah. So thus far we're actually like, everybody's going in the right direction. 
And it, it has a lot to do with the fact that we're putting as much energy into making it enjoyable as we are making it functional. Yeah. So it's not about getting it down. You know, the value of cuisine for professional athletes is very different than that of a uh, luxury diner. So um, the thing is, is these guys, <clears throat> their priorities are flipped. So they have to eat quite a bit um, as work because they need to keep their body right. performing, right? So it's a machine, you got to fuel it. There's targeted goals. When you get up to an enormous amount of lean muscle tissue, like some of these guys have, they need a lot of protein in a day. So it can be arduous to consume it all. So really trying to um, be uh, exciting with the different types of proteins we're using, changing the preparations all the time, using a lot of seasoning without using a lot of fat um, uh, to prevent flavor fatigue. Tell us about some of the safety protocols, um, your additional concerns to you protect your culinary team and also the players that they feed. The Raiders brought like a whole nother level to that though. And so uh, we have our own testing facility on site. We all get tested every single day. Every day, uh, wow. Every single day, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> we all get to have these on our person. So okay. when we clock uh -huh. in, it's like a thermal, we get temped at the gate and we get temped again when we sign in with an app that like biometric scan says yes this is Gary he checked all these boxes yeah and then we pick up one of these guys and this has my uh, personal like GPS signal assigned to it and it has my tier in it so the building is broken up into different oh <laughs> they're not allowed everybody's not allowed to interact with each other that makes sense and, um, so what happens is you're this will, it'll flash if you're too close to somebody, like within six <laughs> And if you're, it'll make auditory alarms if you're wow. next to somebody in the wrong tier. That is uh, so cool. And then it records it all. Wow, there's no Whoa. hiding in the walk-in then, like a normal restaurant. <laughs> no, no, no. Everybody <laughs> knows where you are. Yeah. That's so yeah. crazy. So, so, so what happens if you violate that? Like you're, you're, <laughs> you're stung, you're electrocuted. <laughs> Do you get disciplinary action? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, actually, if the NFL will find you. Oh, oh. really? Whoa. <laughs> okay. I'll take the right up. <laughs> yeah. Um, we also use these a lot. So because <laughs> I have different, like on our culinary team, I have different tiers of people that are not allowed to actually come in contact with each other. But somehow we need to provide uh, service to each other and uh, to the players and then also do the prep and the receiving and those departments are not allowed to interact with each other. So we use a lot of walkie talkies. Oh. Um, we also have systems where like we put in like uh, hot boxes that really like bisect a wall that you can open on either side. So like I can cook food and put it in it, oh. and grab it from the other side and we're not coming in contact with each other. Wow, that's awesome. I love that there's all, cool. that, all that stuff in place. So. What's been the player response so far? I know I did see the post about Coach Cruden's birthday cake. <laughs> um, what, what's been their response? Like, how how's it been going in there? Uh, overwhelmingly positive. The um, you know we had a uh, uh, Mr. Madoff, the general manager. I mean, he was on property four days, and he got interviewed uh, about like what was the best thing on the about the new facility, and he said the food. Yay! Uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, their, their facility in, um, in California did not, you know, uh, did not have a, a great culinary outlet like this does. So um, the response has been really good um, because we're providing them with like very fresh, very high quality food that's, um, uh, you know, as ala minute as we can get it when you got to get, you know, 68 football players through a line real quick. Describe kind of like a day, you know, just what do they kind of eat in the morning? What's kind of lunch? What's dinner? Like just a general idea. Just so, you know, people have an idea about what athletes eat generally. I learned something interesting here. Like right, right from the get-go, when you have a lot of muscle mass and you exercise, your blood goes to your muscles, not to your digestive tract. Oh, yeah. Makes so sense. 
digestion becomes a very big concern when if you're putting down, you know, 50 ounces of protein a day. Yeah. Uh, digestion is like a big part of your your life, you know? So um, uh, in the mornings, some guys like like simple, you know, I want a Weeze Desert Bloom eggs and they want, you know, I want simply scrambled eggs and I want a high calorie smoothie um, so I can kind of be fired up um, and have enough energy and fuel. And then at lunchtime, they may eat what we would consider like two to three lunches, but we'll always kind of have a formula to make sure that we can address the different goals for the average player. So we're going to have usually at least, you know, two or three uh, like high protein vegetal dishes, and then um, always something comfy, right? Yeah. People would love to have comfort food uh, and, um, you know, never to, the thing is, is like the value of the food needs to be there. But when you're burning as many calories as they are, they're not so concerned about like the accoutrements around it, right? Yeah. So it's very low allergies. We have almost no, aller oh, four allergies in the whole building. Um, Hallelujah. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, and, you know, they're not, you know, the guys, they don't really eat very much sugar, like desserts, hmm. like the, some of the coaches like them, but most of the, most of the players are, are lean and mean. And, wow. um, uh, uh, and then dinner time, it's usually, uh, they want to see more protein centric food, always protein centric, but um, they'll want to see a little bit more like kind of like stick to your ribs uh, kind of food. Um, there's a bunch of guys from the South here. So we try to try to, uh, you know, get some stuff in there that they enjoy. But really, I the capacity to appreciate different foods is very high. Oh, so, that's good. Yeah, they're seeing a lot of different cuisines. You you say high value proteins that are not difficult to eat. Can you name a few examples? We're having a lot of fun expanding the answer for them. Like uh, like last week we started octopus and um, oh. did it on one of the special menus because they this. A particular player needs 12 ounces of protein per meal. Um, they're doing like up to five feedings a day. Oh. So wow. it, 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 um, you can't just be like it's salmon, chicken, beef. Yeah, like you know, five times. Yeah, you're gonna get bored. Yeah. Um, like I want them to look forward to tomorrow. Like I can't wait to crack this open and see what we have in here. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Um. It's interesting because we're seeing the more adventurous guys try the new stuff and then turn around and, you know, give the other guys a hard time about not trying oh, yeah. it or something like that. So we're really enjoying. Um, so we started it with kind of like some of our like advanced diners and like this week we're rolling it out for everybody. With, so like octopus is great, right? Yeah, that's really, amazing. It's an amazing, unique protein because you don't get the same value from every protein you know so yeah. you want to have diversity um did you uh, grill it we marinate it um and sous vide it okay uh, uh, and then we'll and then finish it on the grill yeah <laughs> that's awesome all right let's move on to chef show and tell with chef gary what do you got for the class today oh whoa Whoa, oh. cooler! <laughs> I was like, why is he going backwards? <laughs> yeah. Okay, explain. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, everybody, chefs and uh, restaurateurs, uh, you know, everybody is very focused on what products they're bringing into their restaurants, right? And, um, uh, you know, mostly what goes out of the restaurant is money. And um, you know you spend money on product, and that's kind of your your cycle how you get more of it. Um, we have chosen here to pursue uh, um, giving back more than cash for product. So we actually uh, use these coolers. Uh, we have a bunch of them, about 600 liters worth of storage, um, and we keep it under refrigeration, and we sort and um, 
save all of our compostable materials. Uh, and this is unprocessed food product. And um, about every five days or so, I drive out to Pahrump and um, drop it off at Desert Bloom to uh, help them create more soil uh, to create more arable land to grow better products in. Wow, we love this. Reduce, reuse, recycle. All right, we're going to move to our favorite part of the podcast. It is Two Sharp Chefs on the Fly. 60 seconds, rapid fire questions, this time with Chef Gary from Honest Hospitality. Gary, are you ready? Yes. All right. All right. And go. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? To heal people. Best binge worthy show. I saved Game of Thrones until quarantine. I'd been saving it. I watched wow. the whole thing in like the first couple weeks of quarantine. Dream place to travel and eat. Uh, India. Childhood food craving. Pizza. Okay. Bacon, egg, and cheese on a hard roll. So what haven't you done that you really want to do? I don't know, man. I've done so much. I, um, you know, maybe create some human lives. Oh, that's, good. that's very cool. I love that. Um, favorite cuisine. I love Thai flavors. I love Indian food. It's gotta be bold and fresh. Best cooking advice. Find a, a chef who will mentor you and spend actually spend time with you. Don't worry about who's famous or what's going on on social media. It's nice, but it doesn't actually improve your skill set to have worked for somebody who's famous. The most important thing you can do is stay on a steep learning curve and don't worry about anything else besides that. I love that. That is so cool. I love yeah. that. All right. Last thing we're going to ask you to do, Gary, is to sell it for whatever you like. It's your time. If I could convince everybody to do one thing, it would be to um, get out of the house and go support your local restaurants. Uh, look for a mom and pop and, uh, you know, obviously be safe, but every dollar you spend is a, uh, a job you save. So, um, you know, do whatever it is that you can do to support your community and uh, um, keep it as healthy and happy as you can. Good luck to the Raiders. Go Niners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. It was so nice to talk to you and nice to meet you. you Thank nice you. Thank you Thank for the you. opportunity. Yay. Thank you.